as Paul said, I've been talking about um, fighting the good fight of faith. I want to talk to you today about the power of the flowing river. Fighting the fight of faith by letting God flow through you. And um, as we talk about this, we have, we have read a little bit in Scripture about the water coming under the doors of the temple and a little bit about the river in Revelations and a little bit about the spring of water that Jesus said is going to happen. What I want to do today is I want to quickly, for me anyway, um, talk about this power of the river. We talk about the river, but have you ever seen what happens when a river just continually flows? Have you ever seen what happens when a, you have a leaky gutter and that drip of water just continually drips on concrete or continually drips into a rock and that soft, pliable, nothing water, two molecules of hydrogen and one molecule of oxygen, together can devastate. We saw, we saw what happened when a huge flood just hit one of the states and wiped out thousands of cattle and thousands of acres of farmland. And this, this water, if it flows and if it's channeled properly, it can generate energy to power cities and Houses, and if you woke up this morning and took a hot shower, hopefully everybody woke up this morning and took a hot shower. Um, we'll let you know after service as we walk amongst each other whether that happened or not. But um, this power of the water flowing through us, it, it can do so many things. And what we want to do is we want to take a, a look at it this morning. In John 7, 38, Jesus said, Whoever believes in me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. All right? Um, out of his belly, down in here, out of his spirit, some of the scripture says, some, depending on what version you're looking at, from within you will flow this river. All right, so what I want to do is now let's, take, let's take a quick look at, at what we've been talking about from Ezekiel. Ezekiel 47, anybody familiar with that passage yet? Hang around, you'll become familiar with it. Then he brought me back to the door of the temple. He's talking about an angel. Ezekiel is talking about an angel taking him back to the door of the temple. And there was water flowing from under the threshold of the temple toward the east, for the front of the temple faced east. And the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. So you have this water flowing. You have this water flowing from under the threshold of the temple. And. If you go back and look at the whole story that is being presented here, what is happening is it starts out as a trickle, and as it comes through, there's a stream, and as it, it, it flows further, it's, it's a, a bigger stream, then it flows into a river, and as Ezekiel is seeing this, and the angel is taking him, and we, we know the story, he goes ankle deep, and then knee deep, then waist deep, then chest deep, and then he can't wait anymore, and it says waters, to swim in. And, but it originates from where? The temple of God. All right, so as, as we see this, we, we pop over into the end, of the end of the book, into Revelations 21. And in 20, 21, it's talking about all kinds of things, but specifically in verse 22, the angel of the Lord is showing John the new heaven, the new earth, the new heaven, and he said he's looking around Jerusalem, and the one thing that is missing in Jerusalem, he says, but I saw no temple in it, 
for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. So, as, as the things go here, um, there, are, there are issues that happen with the Lord and Paul talked about John 13 as he was, wasn't that, wasn't that good about the communion this morning? Such a good teaching. But in John 14, I mean, John, the, it, it's got to be one of my favorite portions of Scripture, John, beginning in John 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Judas, not Iscariot, said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me does not keep my words, and the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. So the Father God is saying this, is if you love Jesus, we will keep his command, he will keep his words, And because we keep his words, he will come where? Into us, and he will dwell with us, and he will live in us. Now let me ask you a question. In heaven, who is the temple? Where is the temple? Who is the temple? The Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple. So if the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple, and if you are obedient to Jesus Christ, where is the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb? The same place he is in the New Jerusalem. The Jews have a song that says, the heart of the Jew is Jerusalem, the Messiah his only king, and when in the heart of the Jew he reigns, peace to the city he brings. And then it goes off into Hebrew, and I can't recite it. So, the, um, when God is king and the throne is in here, there is something that happens on the inside of you that will affect not only you, but every, everybody around you. And the key to this is relationship with the Father through Jesus Christ. Why did Jesus come? Why did Jesus come? He came to redeem us, what? Back to God. We have been redeemed back to God so that we can have a relationship not just with Jesus, but with the Father. All right? In um, in, in 1 Corinthians 3.16, Paul is writing to the church And the Spirit of God is saying, through him do you not discern and understand that you, the whole church at Corinth, are God's temple, his sanctuary. And that God's Spirit has his permanent dwelling in you to be at home in you collectively as a church and also individually. All right, now, one of of the things that I have been speaking about quite, quite heavily is a life of holiness. But I want to tell you something about holiness, and I'm not backpedaling on holiness whatsoever. We talk about not sinning to be holy. But do you know what it is that grieves the Holy Spirit? The Bible doesn't say it's our sin that grieves the Holy Spirit. It's not me getting along with Ward. It's me not getting along with Chris or John. We know everybody gets along with Pat, so we're all good on that account. But if you go back, and I've been digging in in Ephesians the last couple weeks, and if you go back and read in Ephesians 4 and 5, it's talking exactly what Paul was talking about this morning during communion, that we need to love each other. We need to be patient with one another. We need to be held accountable to one another. We need not to lie. We need to, we need to speak the truth often. If I say I'm going to do something, I need to do it. If I say I'm, I, I am, I am not going to do something, I need not to do it. If I, we need to tell the truth 
and we need not to get aggravated with each other. And he says, by doing that, you won't grieve the Spirit. Towards the end of, towards the end of chapter 4 and in, in the beginning of 5, it says, love one another. But these things, all right, let's, let's look at Revelations 21. I, I am going to do my really, really hardest to, to take care of this in the allotted time I have. So write, for these words are true and faithful, the angel is telling John. And he said to me, it is done. I am Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. Who gets this fountain of, of living water? You have to be thirsty. Whoever thirsts, I will give this water, this, this fountain of living water, freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes. The whole thing about the first three chapters of Revelation was to the church's you have to overcome. You have to overcome. There was one church, he says, there's not too much I can say about you, so I'm going to be quiet. You've really blown it. In every aspect of your life, you have blown it. So I'm not going to tell you. He says, however, if you overcome, you'll reap this reward. But all the other churches, he said, it's some good about them all. There was one church that was doing everything fairly, fairly pretty good. For he who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, listen to this list, the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake that burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. So my guess is probably we want to avoid those things. Just saying, okay, keep yourself clear. Revelations 22, 11 says this, he who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give everyone according to his worth. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, Blessed are those who do his commandments. Why are they blessed if they do his commandments? What did Jesus say in John 14? If you love me, you will keep my words, and that will please my Father. And if my Father's pleased, he's going to come in, and he and I will come up, we will take up residence inside of you, And what happens when Jesus is inside of you? You are at peace. All right? Blessed are those who do his commandments that they may have the right to eat of the tree of life and may enter through the gates of the city, but outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going to tell you a story about me. When I was eight years old, I turned my back on everything Christian and I gave my whole life, body, and soul over to the enemy of my own accord and I became a not nice person. And I became a master liar. Uh, just, I, was, I wasn't just proficient at it. I was expert at it. And um, you say you have to have a pretty good memory to keep a lie. Well, my memory became really, really good at it. And God, um, God was gracious to me. He kept... He, he hooked me up with a woman. I don't know that she's told maybe more than two or three lies in her life. And she started catching me in my lies. And um, I, gave my, I gave my heart to the Lord when we were 19. And, um, but you know, old habits die hard. 
Anybody know that? Old habits die hard, being mean. If you're mean to somebody, it's just hard to all of a sudden be nice to somebody. If you exaggerate, it's hard not to. But the Lord started dealing with me and started dealing with me. And then he led me to Revelations, which I've seen it dozens and dozens and dozens of times. But I started saying, you know what? If you tell a lie, God's not really too thrilled with you. And if you continue in it, because not only was I a liar, I practiced the lies that I, that I said. And um, that being said, God delivered me from it. And one of the things I value most now in my life is truth. Um, I, I, I do my best if I misspeak any place to not let it go but immediately catch it and say it. So what does this have to do with the, the water flowing? Well, I wasn't sure how I was going to do all this because of the time given. But what I want to talk to you is not so much this sermon, but I want to talk to you about the action steps to let the water flow. Can we do that? And my, my sermon is actually going to be my action steps of what's, what we have to do. All right? Number one, if you love Jesus, if you love Jesus, and if you are walk, walking in obedience to Jesus, and specifically if you've received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but you're not seeing the power thereof in your life, I want to talk to you for the next few minutes on how to clear it, how to make it work, and the results of the flow of the river in your life. Action step number one, clear the log jam. We've talked about this, John and I have talked about clearing the log jam for quite a while. What happens, has anybody ever been up northwest Washington, Oregon, those areas where they do timber, timber mining and stuff like that? And, you see these huge logs, and sometimes they, they'll, they'll create a jam, and, and they wedge in there really tight, and they can't get, they, they almost have to break them up with dynamite. I, I watched once as they broke them up with dynamite, and, and, um, and then, then they start flowing, and everything starts clearing up. But behind that log jam is just debris and dirt and foamy, scuzzy, dirty water. Because even though the river keeps coming here, it's dammed up and it doesn't flow. And because of the log jam, the gunk that's in front of it, it just piles up behind it and it just can't flow. And even though the river's flowing down through it, underneath it, the surface of the water is filthy behind it. So one, clear the log jam. How do you do that? Okay, now some of this, we're gonna, we're, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be repetitive from what we've taught before. But you are going to confess and when you confess, you must acknowledge your sin to confess your sin. And then we talked about teshuva early on when we first started teaching. And we talked about teshuva, what the, the, the Hebrew word for repentance. It's not enough just to recognize your sin and confess your sin. You must repent of your sin. You must say, this sin is detrimental to me, my family, and my church. My sin affects every single one of you. Your sin affects every single one of us. And what most people don't realize is that my sin affects you. Your sin affects me. And we must come to this place of holiness. All right? We must confess and repent of all known sin. We sang a song, my sins are many, but his mercy was greater. I leaned over to Donna and I, 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 I whispered to her, we've got to get to the place where we sing, our sins were many, and his grace was greater. That not every time, every time I... My goal and my desire for my life is every time I come up here or any time I walk to a new day, my sin that day is less than the day before. Are we going to screw up? You betcha. 
probably till the day you draw your last breath, unless you're in a serious coma or something like that. But until that day comes, there will be, there will be times of attitude, sometimes action, that we must confess and repent of those sins. All right? We have to get rid of the log jam. Clear it up. Just take it and let that water begin to flow. All right? You've seen this other one. I've said it many, 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 many times. It's not my own saying. I wish I could, I wish I could say it. any of these were mine, but this is all borrowed from stuff I, I've studied in revivals. Two is obey the Spirit quickly. When God tells you to do something, do it as soon as you possibly can or in the time frame that he's told you to. Now, Peter and John went to pray. You guys know the song? They met a lame man on the way. He asked him for alms as he held out his palms, and this is what they had to say. I don't have time right now. We'll catch you later, dude. What did they do? And they, turning their gaze upon him, perceiving he had the faith to be healed, said, silver and gold, we don't have any. But what I have, what did they have? They had the flow of the Spirit. This was shortly right after Pentecost. They had the flow of the Spirit. What was flowing through them? The Holy Spirit. When we talk about the river, every time you look at this river from, from Ezekiel to John to to revelations, what is flowing? This river is flowing. It is representative of the Holy Spirit. And that river will do anything and everything because it is the, it is the Holy Spirit that gives life. It is the Holy Spirit that resuscitates. And it is the Holy Spirit that brings the command, the word of the Lord Jesus Christ who got it all from the Almighty God. He said, that which I have is the Father's. And when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will take what is mine, which I've already gotten from, from the Father, and he will give it to you. So Peter and John looked at this guy and said, we don't have anything, but perceiving that he had faith to be healed, they said, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And they took his hand and lifted him up. And what does the Scripture said? Immediately strength came into him. Immediately, not in the sweet by and by, but immediately. So you want to... I'm, I'm just a real firm believer in this, is that there is an appointed time for just about everything on the planet. And I believe the appointed time for you to start moving in the, in the power and the gift of the Spirit is now. It is time the church wakes up, does what we're told to do, obeys quickly what, we're, what we have been commanded to do. And when we obey quickly, that often means that we must open our mouth with boldness. All right? So number three is open your mouth with boldness because of this, on the day of Pentecost, when, when the Holy Spirit came, the Holy Spirit came like a mighty rushing wind, and they, they all thought they were drunk. Everybody who was observing them thought they were drunk. And this guy that had, uh, we call it, foot and mouth disease stands up. Peter. He stands up amongst the crowd and he said, men and brethren, these are not drunk as you suppose. Now Peter, do you suppose it took just a little boldness on Peter's part? This guy just a few days prior, well about two months prior, denied Jesus. Denied, totally walked away from him totally did nothing else, ran and hid and cussed. But on the day of Pentecost, 
on the day of Pentecost when the river started flowing through him. The log jam got cleared, right? The log jam got cleared. He obeyed the Spirit promptly, and he stood up and said, this is that which was spoken of. Now, how did he know that? The log jam was cleared. The Spirit was flowing through him. He knew Scripture beforehand. And if you want to clear the log jam, if you want to confess boldly, if you want to speak quickly, you must open your mouth and speak with boldness that which you know from Scripture. That which the Scripture has done in your own life. Share your testimony. All right, in... Um, in, in, in a few places in Scripture, it says, it says that we will display the goodness, the virtue, the glory of our God. And how do we do that? By opening your mouth. And when you begin to open your mouth and declare the goodness of God because the river is flowing through you, it has an effect of washing and as it begins to wash over the people that you are speaking to, as it has a, the effect, not only does it, it clean them, it takes the people and their gunk and it washes them and it washes the trash away. So that they can stand. And, and one of the things that it says in Revelation is that that water was crystal clear. It was crystal clear. And when the water begins to flow through you and the log jam is gone, and all the garbage in your life is gone, and you obey quickly, have you ever seen what a flash flood does? That's just pretty amazing, because it just comes and boom, everything in its way is gone. I was, I've been listening, and I've, I've been rereading the life of um, Smith Wigglesworth, and some of the things that he would do, and he, he was a very gruff man, and, and uh, he said people would come up to him, and he goes, in his accent, he goes, what's up? What's up? Never asked, what do you need? He goes, what's up? And what's up? You know what? Everybody, if you take time to listen, when you open your mouth to speak boldly, you must also open your ears, ears to hear intently. What do these people need? What is it? I, I, I ask people all the time, what is it that only you and God know about that only God can take care of for you? And most people are hesitant to share that. But if that river is flowing through you, and you said, I'll pray, and God will give it to you. Do you have the boldness to do that? Jesus says you have the authority to. Do you have the boldness to? When the disciples prayed after they had been in prison, it says they, got, they came together and they prayed. He said, now, Lord, behold their threatenings. Behold their, their, what they're saying they're going to do to us. Now, grant unto thy servants boldness that we might preach and stretch forth the hand of the holy child Jesus. So the, second, the, the fourth thing I want to tell you is this. Stretch out your hand with the anointing. If you want to see the river of God flow through your life, this is mandatory. You have no option on this one. What would have happened if Peter and John came to this, this lame man at the, at the beautiful gate at the temple? And they said, here, have a couple coppers. Buy yourself some food. Be filled, be well fed, and went their way in peace. What would have happened if they say, we don't have any money, dude, but in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. We're out of here. They heard his, intently heard, or saw, or they, my guess is that they, they heard with their eyes, okay? They saw what needed to be happening, and he might, have, he might have been like these guys on the side of the road with a little card written in Greek or Hebrew or whatever language they... They were at the temple back then, and the guys come up to him, 
Silver and gold, I don't have any, but what I have, I'm giving to you in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, rise up and walk. What does it say they did not? Next. They stretched out their hand, took him by the hand, and picked him up. One of the things that I, 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 I am so excited about with Smith Wigglesworth's ministry, and this is why I read these guys. If God did it for those guys, I know he can do it for me. And unless I speak with boldness, unless I feel the... Unless I, listen to this, unless I clear the logjam in my life, unless I obey the Spirit quickly, unless I open my mouth with boldness, and unless I stretch forth my hand with anointing to raise them up, it will never happen. Because we have to get the what if, the yeah but, out of the way. We go on the authority of the Word of God and the Word of God only. And when you do that, the spirit, this, this river will, will flow through you from your innermost belly, will flow streams of what water? Living water. Donna brought, brought home a card yesterday from the, from the ladies group. I, I don't know which one of you wrote it, so if I, one of the sisters wrote it. It said, don't pluck up and doubt what you've planted in faith. Did I get that right? Terry did it. Way to go, Terry. I said, boy, is this good. Do not pluck up in doubt what you've sown in faith. Always make your words agree with Scripture concerning what God has said about you. You feel an ache and pain? In the name of Jesus, I'm healed. By his stripes, I was healed. I am healed. Is that pain still there? Could be. But you stand on what the Word says. And you continue it. And I'm going to tell you one thing. We need to, all of us, we need to start watching our diets. I'm just flat out saying that. Sugar. Sugar is the main food of cancer. Okay? It's dry. It just sucks it up. Just crazy what, what we've been, Don and I have been learning about nutrition and, and, and what to eat and what not to eat. But a lot of people will, will say, God, heal me. And they're eating, they're eating things that they know are making them sick. Or doing things that they know are making them sick. So we, we must open our, our mouths with boldness. And then we must stretch forth our hands with the anointing to do something about it. All right, so what happens then after this? So you're doing all this. Do you think anybody's going to make a mistake doing these things? I promise you, you will. All right? What's Mama Louise been telling us? Get over yourself. Get over yourself. Get up and make a mistake again. And as you learn by making your mistake, what happened, what happened when the guys came down from the mountain and there was this guy with a... They, they, they come down from the Mount of Transfiguration. They see Jesus transformed into his glory. They see Moses and Elijah up there with him. Moses and Elijah? Yeah, I think so. If I got that wrong, forgive me. They saw, he saw two guys up there with him. All right? So, and they see him transformed into glory. And Peter, all right? Peter, the bold one, bold at the wrong time, says, Lord, it's good for us to be here. Let's make three tabernacles. And as soon as he said that, what happened? It was gone. So they come down from that experience down to the, where this guy has a... Has a Possessed son. And he says, Master, can you take care of this? And Jesus goes, hmm, how long has he been doing that? How long, how, how long has that been going on? He says, since he was a kid. Throws himself into the fire, you know, just. Can you do anything about that? Jesus says, can I? Can I do anything about that? He says, how about you? What about you? Can you believe? Can you believe? And in the process of doing this, setting the child free, he comes to this place afterwards where he's talking to his disciples. And they said, Lord, why, why couldn't we, why couldn't we deal with this? 
And I love the one translation that says, because of the smallness of your faith. Because of the smallness of your faith. These guys have been with him for quite a while now. But as you walk this stuff through, you will have lots of time to mess up. Mess up anyway. Do it. Mess up trying to do the things of God. Because as each time you mess up and you understand, okay, I messed up. Where did I miss it? Examine what you did. Not in a condemning way, but examine what did I do? How did I miss this? And sometimes the Lord will tell you, because you have to do this, you have to go to war and make peace with your brother. Because I can't use you, because you're stinking thinking, there's this blockage here, and my river can't flow because your heart isn't right with your brother. Sometimes I have to go and I have to make restitution. And I said, you know, Ward, when I visited you last time, I took some of your cowboy boots. Here are the boots back and here's another pair to make restitution. You understand what I'm saying? We must come to this place where we are free. When I say free, I'm not saying I'm free to cuss you out. I'm saying I'm free because there's nothing between us. And where that happens, then I'm free to do this other stuff. But in the process, God will tell you sometimes, you know what? Like Jesus told his disciples. But I'm telling you this, this kind only comes out by prayer and fasting. And sometimes you have to pray and sometimes you have to fast. Sometimes not so much. Sometimes it just happens where somebody asks you, hey, can you take care of this? And I said, yeah, we'll take care of that. Tell all your ushers, tell all your deacons to leave the man alone. And they, they, they held on to this guy. He was the son of a witch doctor. And we were down in, in, in uh, Butler, Ohio at a church. And, and this demon was acting up on him. And he pushed so hard to throw these, there about six guys holding him down. And he pushed back so hard that it busted the bolts that were holding the, the pew down. And he threw these guys off. And I told, I told Mickey, I said, tell them to leave him be. And let's go back. And this guy started cussing at me. And I said, shut up in the name of Jesus and follow me. And I just turned my back and I walked and he obediently followed. But sometimes when you're dealing with the devil, sometimes you've got you've to fast. Sometimes you've got to just take the authority that you have and there's no time to fast before you deal with it. That's why it's good that you be fasted up before you enter. You know what I'm saying by fasted up? Make fasting a regular part of your living. So that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit can flow through you, this living water. And if you ever think to yourself that, you know what, I'm pretty cool. I got this water going through me. Don't do that. Go back to step number one. Confess your sin. Because you're nothing. You are a vessel. You are a channel that the Holy Spirit is using to do something. But after you do all these things, what do you do then? You keep doing them, okay? In, 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 in my business mentoring, we call it rinse and repeat. You've learned all this, you've practiced it all, you've messed up some, so what do you go do? You get into the Word of God and you read the Word of God, you shower all up by the washing of the water of the Word, and you start all over again and you clear the log jam. You confess and repent of your sin. You obey the Spirit quickly. You, you speak with boldness. You stretch forth your hand to heal with the anointing. And you know what? You're going to make just a few less mistakes this time. Are you going to make mistakes? You betcha. If you're a betting man, you come out and let's, let's put a wager down. You say you're not going to make a mistake, and I'll bet you 100 bucks to one. You will. And I'm going to make money every single time. I've watched, I've watched major ministries, um, e even with CLC, when we, ca we, came, we came to the, the encounter, one of the things that they do at the after group 
as they come together for prayer time and, and reflection time, where did we miss it? What didn't we see? What happens? How can, we, how can we improve on this? And we need to do this with our own lives. You and the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus need to have a powwow together. Where did I miss it? Well, God, I did that and you didn't do it. My promise to you is if you do it his way, his time, he will always do it. Our arrogance thinks that God let us down. The truth is, we missed it someplace along the line. So what we do is we come and we rinse and we repeat. We clear the log jam. We confess our sin. Sometimes confessing your sin, you have to go back and make restitution with your brother. All right? Then we obey the Spirit again promptly. Then we open our mouth again boldly to tell our, to tell our story, to tell, to tell the testimonies of those that things that we've seen, then you stretch forth your hand to heal. And you'll see less mistakes. And then you rinse and repeat. Go to the Word. Confess your sin. Clear the log jam. Open your mouth. Do what the Lord tells you quickly. And it keeps going over and over and over. And you know what begins to happen? People begin to hear you because you are clear in here this this stream that is flowing from in here is crystal clear holy spirit water and everybody likes a good cold drink of good water you know and you stretch forth your hand did you did you did you notice that in in the acts they never they never prayed god god would you heal them In fact, throughout the whole te New Testament where it speaks of healing, never once was God, will you? It says, grant that we might have boldness to stretch forth your hand to heal in the name of the holy child Jesus. You stretch forth your hand, why? Because it's already in there. The prayer for healing is this. God, give me boldness to do what you've already done. The work that Jesus did, the healing that Jesus did, he saw the Father do it, and he did it. The words that Jesus said, he heard the Father say it, and he said it. Never once, oh God, she's got a lump on her breast. Oh Jesus, help her, heal her. Heal her. I already did. It's already gone. Rise up in faith and believe it and curse the thing and get it out of there. It's in your hand, but you must, you must believe. The Spirit of God has got to be bigger than your butt. Do you understand what I'm saying? You cannot have this, yes, but what if I'm this and what if I'm that? Listen, you are that. And you are this. And what you are is a vessel of the Almighty God to show forth his glory and to show forth his praise, to give testimony to the word of God that God is true. I am tired of the name of God being blasphemed because of Christians. I'm tired of it. In my life, I'm tired of it. When I walk out someplace, I don't... I, I, was, I was talking on the phone last night. When I was a kid, I told you I had given myself fully, I mean fully, to the devil and his work. And my dad was a pastor. And in my church, a lady came up to me and she said, Johnny, she gets like right in my face, she says, Johnny, you're nothing but the devil in disguise. And I looked at her and I said, you know what? That's my fault because I never meant it to be in disguise. And I'm going to get you if you don't watch out. She goes, oh, 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 I knew it! I knew it! But you know what? Why? Why do we make excuses for the devil? Or for being, for being God's children? Did, did you ever see a drunk fall off a bar stool? And laugh and laugh 
and laugh about it. Just miss the, miss the stool totally, and they're, they're out, on the, out on the carpet or out on the, on the hardwood floor, and they're just plastered drunk and laughing and laughing and laughing. And something happens for the glory of God. Oh, I'm so sorry. I, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't mean for that to happen in public. Why? Why are we so ashamed of the move of God? Why are we so ashamed that we're tongue talkers? Why are we so ashamed that we can prophesy? Why not stretch forth your hand in healing and do something for God? And then rinse and repeat. I'm way over time. I'm sorry. I didn't stick to my assignment. Let's pray. Um, if somebody wants to go, let whoever's out there know that we're done. God, we just, we just come to you, Father. We ask, Lord, that you would open, give us insight to see the log gem in each one of our hearts. What is it that is holding the flow of the Holy Spirit? Father, we, you have given us permission. You have given us grace. You have given us authority. You have given us power, and we don't use it. And we're asking, Lord, that you would open our eyes. Where have we missed it? Where have we missed it, Father, that we might bring you honor, that we might bring you glory, that we would die to ourselves that Christ might live through us? As Jesus answered Philip, Philip, have I been so long with you, you have not recognized the Father. If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Father, we cry out to you, let it be that those who see us will see Jesus and the Holy Spirit in us that we might walk in the power, that we might walk in the authority, that we might walk in the boldness, that we might walk with the freshness of life flowing in us and through us to a lost and dying world. Fill us with compassion, Father, that we might go forth from this place with healing in our hands, compassion on our lips, and Father, that as we have prayed so many times from the beginning of this little church, we pray one more time, Father, help us to be the people in the church you've called us to be. A people that always build up and never tear down. A people in a church that takes a message of hope everywhere we go to everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, amen.